So hello everyone, welcome here to round number 9 of the 2016A NASA Rallycross Challenge season here at the 2.62 mile Riverside International Raceways. It's Josh Merch bringing you the call, as always, for the Autoworks Sports Network. We're here in Riverside, which is, has been a long staple of the NASA Rallycross Challenge season on the original season in 2012A, and then it returned in 2013C and has been here since then and it has produced some incredible racing. As unfortunately we only have seven cars here today, eight will receive points as we do have Dylan Smith getting a provisional, but that will leave us with two quarterfinal races of four laps apiece. The winner will automatically advance to the final and get two bonus points. Then we will have one semifinal of the remaining five cars. Those cars will race, all of them will make the final, but the top two will get one bonus point to replicate two semifinals. And the other drivers will be sorted on points, technically, for the quote-unquote LCQ. That semifinal will be three laps. The final will be six laps to determine who will come out on top in Riverside. As Cody Erdman comes in today's race with a nine-point lead over his teammate after the calamity over the last five weeks, Mertz has rallied back, no pun intended, to be within nine points. That is absolutely incredible. But what could have been for the German had he not had those troubles at the beginning of the season? Because if you think of it this way, Erdman finished first, second, and first, while Mertz finished fifth, sixth, and seventh. So the points, definitely the deficit is there. You can see it, but Mertz has been trying hard over the last five weeks. He's got two weeks left to try and win this championship, and who knows what will happen. We're going to go on board. Mertz fastest in seating, but he had an issue on his seating lap. He's going to get thrown to the back, but we'll at least show you the lap that he took in his Red Bull Subaru. So coming around the final turn eight here at Riverside, California, onto the front straightaway, the asphalt front straightaway, and down to the first left-hand kink here. You want to bite the curb to get the car to rotate. Don't hit it too hard. Over the jump, and don't do this, as you saw what I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, penalty for the 81. Now, up the S's. A right, a left, very tricky to do, very fun if you get it right, but you cannot pass, heading up the hill, into turn six, hard braking into the left to get the car to set for the right, clip the dirt to get the car to rotate, down the short straightaway, to the right would be the full course, but we run the short course here at Riverside, into turn number eight, over the jump, very tricky to get that braking right, as you can hit the, the jump and attempt to brake in the air and your car obviously won't stop, off the right, into the left, and on to the drag strip, over the dirt mounds. And starting to go down the hill here in Riverside, we've seen plenty of action from the NASA Rallycross Bridge to the start-finish line. One of the best sections of a NASA Rallycross race starts now, the left-hand flick. We've seen cars try and go double wide near the wall there into turn nine, the final corner, oval corner. Erdman and Hagenstein, for example, along with Livingood, they will do well here, Merch struggles. Uh, drifting through the corner, off of the corner, and onto the front straightaway. That was a lap of the Riverside National Raceway. As quarterfinal one, getting ready to get on track, it's going to be Dylan Livingood, Tristan Hagenstein, and Josh Mertz. As that is your grid, on pole is Hagenstein, then it's Mertz, and then it is Livingood. So two MRT boys in this race, along with one Revolution Racing car. Getting ready to go for the first quarter final here in Riverside. It's lights out and away we go. And off the line, Livingood jumps immediately out to the dirt to get a better run than Hagenstein. But he gets beat to turn one by the Dutchman and off the road they go. And up the hill for the first time, Hagenstein leads the two most successful drivers in the series. And Hagenstein has not gotten a win yet. Up the hill into turn six for the first time. Hagenstein leads us. Living Good slides it out of the corner, and Mertz is in third, biding his time. We've seen him the last two weeks bide his time and be able to take those victories. To the inside he goes on his friend and rival, but he can't make it happen. Hagen or Living Good, excuse me, clips the curb. Hagenstein did as well, but the Mitsubishis look like they get affected more than the Subarus do. As down the drag strip now, over the mounds. Hagenstein pulling out to about a two-car length lead over the four-time champions. As Mertz 
Drafting with the 51. You don't think drafting would affect these rally cars, but they do. And into the final corner. Living Gun on the outside, sliding it in the 51. Very tricky to get this corner right to spit you onto the front straight away. And after the first lap, it's going to be Hagenstein who leads in his Subaru over Living Good and Mertz. The tricky turn one. You don't want to mess that corner up over the mound to get the car to rotate. And this is the proper way to take turn two, like we were making fun of Mertz in the onboard lap. Behind a little bit is the 81. He might be struggling a little bit. Looks like he had a, <clears throat> a bad entry there into that first corner. As Hagenstein struggled there in the Subaru. Living Good tried to take the fight to him, but that was not to be. Into turn eight. And now, Living Good trying to clip that curb to get the car to bite. We saw that in Aspen a couple weeks ago. The Mitsubishis with the longer wheelbase just don't grip very well. And unfortunately for him, you just have to try different maneuvers to try and make it happen. And it's just difficult to do. These curves, you can get them right and be fast, or you can get them wrong and end up in the fence. We're coming to halfway in the first quarter final. The, the running order has not changed since turn one. Hagenstein to the inside. Living Good trying to take the fight on the outside. He's got the momentum. <clears throat> and the oval racer, the Canadian. Can he do it? Yes, but contact between them and into the wall goes Hagenstein. What a heartbreak in the quarterfinal for the Dutchman. And it looked like arrow loose or a little bit of contact. We'll have to take another look at that. Spins the 83 out and hard into the inside wall goes Tristan Hagenstein. So now, this is the battle for the quarterfinal win. And it's Living Good v. Mertz. And now Living Good's spinning. And it looks like Mertz is just going to go right on by. He's not even going to sit and wait. But there was no contact made from the 81. So it looks as though Mertz might have this quarterfinal win. And I know I mentioned it. He's, he's just learning to bide his time, really. Um, no pressure for a championship potentially going away. As he's on the offensive to try and steal that away from Erdman, but he has nothing to worry about as Living Good in second and Hagenstein looks like major problems on that MRT Subaru and like I said we will take another look at that after this event. So Mertz will enter the final corner to begin the final lap here in Riverside, California. And let's actually go back and take a look here as to what happened between Hagenstein and Living Good coming out of the final corner here. And it looks like Living Good got a fantastic run off the final corner there. And if we slow it down, barely contact. And it just sent Hagenstein into the wall. So unfortunate for him. Let's go on board the 83 here as Mertz finishing up that lap here in the lead of the quarterfinal. Let's go on board Hagenstein. I don't think there was any contact. You heard him pick the revs up as Mertz heads down into the final corner. And he was biding his time the last two weeks and it looks like that strategy has been paying off. Because off the final corner, Mertz is going to win the first quarter final here in Riverside, California. Second is Living Good, and third is Tristan Hagenstein. And now the remaining four drivers will get on track. On pole, it is Philip Kraus. Then it is Doug Denice, Cody Erdman, and Chris Wetz. Is getting ready for the second four-lap quarterfinal here in Riverside, California. As Philip Kraus moves from H&H &H Racing to Area 52 Racing starting today, lights out, and away we go. And off the line, Wetz and Erdman. No, Wetz and Kraus. Contact between Erdman and Kraus, the team owner and the teammate. And that puts Erdman cutting and mowing the lawn here in the 82. 
He does let Kraus by as they were battling. That leaves Wetz in the lead, Kraus in second, Erdman third, Denise fourth. As Victor Valley has left H and H Racing, as of Aspen, there were issues with that team, and then Philip Kraus. Contact with him and Erdman, and he cannot get away from his new team owner. Looks like no penalty issued as Erdman stopped and waited. But Kraus has moved over to Area 52, driving Fords. And uh, it has been announced that they are going to run Citroen C4s starting in 2017A next season. So that should be a fun, fun car as um, they are the fastest on endurance rounds we have seen in the last four years. It is insane to think that the NASA Rallycross Challenge is going on five years old in July of 2017. Wetz leads at the end of lap number one in his Mitsubishi. As Philip Krause, one of the breakout stars of the NASA Rallycross Challenge, it has been a long while since we had a driver storm onto the scene quite like him. As he ran in Valgensward, made the final, had a couple of issues in Germany and Canada, missed the races in Spain, Migas, and the Proving Grounds, but that breakout podium in Aspen granted it was kind of luck of the draw because of the teammate issues, but it's a, still a podium in NASA Rallycross, an incredibly difficult task to do, um, and he was able to pull it off. So Philip Kraus, one of the future stars of this sport, and he's got one of the veterans, actually veterans between him, and along with Doug Denice. Doug Denice, one of the veterans of the series as well, the longtime privateer from Missouri, and um, good to see him making this season-long effort as we've had him come and go in the NASA Rallycross Challenge and one of the drivers that has never had a factory shot but has always shown up and has always given his all here in NASA as Wet still leads running order has not changed as the K1 Revolution Mitsubishi is going to cross halfway here in Riverside for the second quarter final and remember everyone is going to make this final uh, but they do run the semifinal uh, to determine who gets those bonus points and the LCQ drivers. The LCQ technically, if you want to use air quotes, will be determined as Kraus. What an accident for the Canadian. As it looks like a terrifying tumble for the 19 car has put him out of the running in the quarterfinal. As let's go back and take another look here as to what just happened to the Canadian. Wow. In turn two, it looks as though he clips the curb or clips the mound and it tosses the Ford Focus over and a terrifying roll from the Canadian. Obviously, um, we hope he's okay. Haven't heard anything yet. White flag as Wetz has taken the white flag in turn two now in Riverside. Kraus has climbed out of the Twitter Ford Focus for Area 52. He is okay. So good to hear from the marshals down in turn two. Obviously, that car is toast, and he will have to get the spare car for the semi and the final. As Wetz... In the lead, Erdman is trying to get these bonus points as that will lengthen his gap. As right now the points gap is seven as his teammate won. <clears throat> that would bring the gap even back to nine. And seven points in NASA Rallycross. If Erdman finished off the podium, Mertz would, win, or Mertz would be tied in the championship if that happened today, but who knows what will happen. Wetz is going to enter the final corner here. And he's going to <clears throat> be ahead of Erdman and come across the line to win the second quarter final. Erdman second. Third is Denice. And what an accident from Philip Krauss there. Like we said, he is okay in the spare car being pulled out by Area 52. So grid for the semifinal, it's Erdman, 
Denise, Living Good, Kraus, and Hagenstein in the back row. As we are getting ready for the three-lap semifinal, top two will get points. Everybody transfers in this race. It's lights out, and away we go. Denise misses the start. It's going to be Kraus, Living Good, and Erdman three wide into turn two, and that's difficult to do, and it won't happen. Erdman off the road in the 82, ahead of Living Good, side by side. For a moment, we're Kraus and Hagenstein. Erdman leads. He will get one bonus point if he finishes first and se first or second here. So the gap is seven points to his teammate. Living Good bounces off the wall, and that's going to give Kraus an opportunity to get to the second spot. As Denise Hagenstein looks like Hagenstein had an issue going up the hill. So does Denise. And this is the battle for second. As Erdman is setting sail, sayonara to you. We've seen this so many times before, literally at this track. If he sets sail, he's gone. Cody Erdman loves Riverside. Coming to two to go, under the NASA ASN HVMP bridge. And Erdman, living good, Kraus, Denise, Hagenstein, your running order. As... Kraus was checked and released, obviously, from the medical center. They were able to do that relatively quickly to get him in the car for the semifinal as he bangs it off the wall with two laps to go. Try and get a bonus point in his first start for his new team. And Erdman trying to get a bonus point as well. As off the road goes the 82 there, and Erdman had to give up a little bit of time, and now Living Good is going to try and take the fight to him. Erdman all over the road in the 82. Living Good getting close. We're going to come to the white flag here in Riverside, California. It's a car length and a half between Erdman and the four-time champion. Rounding turn number eight. Down the hill and down the drag strip for the penultimate time in the semifinal. Looks like Erdman trying to defend there and trying to break the slipstream. As like I mentioned earlier, this track really does have a slipstream effect and it, it really doesn't make any sense in rally cars as we normally go don't go this fast but it is a thing it does work and it does obviously make you faster into the final corner for the penultimate time living good dove it in and got the car to stick and it's now a car length deficit that he has to make up to Erdman white flag in Riverside the running order has not changed it is Erdman living good sideways. So is Erdman living good struggling in the Mitsubishi as there is a bump on the exit of turn one now. And if you don't get it right, it upsets the car. But if you, if you get it right, it'll turn the car. If you don't get it right, it will send you into the fence. So Erdman pulling away. It's now Kraus in the second spot as both of these guys will get a bonus point and that will make the gap to be eight points between the teammates and we are coming to obviously the final here and then Las Vegas in a week's time under the lights in the Coliseum so that will be a fun race as well as Erdman over the backstretch jumps Kraus is getting close but the gap is still remains the same the depth perception makes you think he gets closer, but the gap has not changed. As he's held the red plate all season long. And no driver has led the entire championship except for Mertz in 2015A. Erdman looks to continue that here in Riverside. Victorious in the semifinal. Kraus second, third living good, fourth the nice. Fifth is Hagenstein. Like I said, the LCQ order... Um, that grid spot will be determined by points. As Hagenstein, what could have been in the quarterfinal earlier. So cars on the pit lane now coming to the grid. We're going to have four Subarus, two Mitsubishis, and a Ford to make seven cars today. The eighth car was Dylan Smith. Technical failure once again on that Mitsubishi will render him unable to race. So three MRT Subarus, a Denise Subaru, 
Revolution Mitsubishis and an Area 52 Ford for our grid today in Riverside. Pole goes to Mertz in the 81. Then it is Wetz in the 71. Hagenstein, technically LCQ winner, third on the grid. Erdman, Kraus, living good back row, is the nice. Six laps here in Riverside, California, getting ready to go for round number nine of the NASA Rallycross Challenge in 2016A. It's lights out, and away we go. Off the line, Living Good shoots way onto the track there to get a better run. Mertz misses the start, and into the first corner, it's going to be Wetz and Hagenstein, American v. Dutchman, and up the hill through the S's. Wetz clips the curb, and around the American goes from the lead of the final. You can write him off already, and now it's an MRT 1, 2, 3 again. Where did we see this before, and what happened that day in the snowy mountains of Colorado? Hagenstein, Mertz, and Erdman, then it's Denise, Kraus, living good, and wet your order. Into turn eight, Hagenstein pulling away from his teammates. The inside of Erdman, or Mertz goes Erdman, banging each other out of the way, and that sends Denise as contact with him and Kraus as it looks like Kraus stopped and waited for Denise, so no penalty for the 19. And now the gap between the MRT boys and Living Good is a couple car lengths, but then behind Living Good, it's Denise, Wetz, and Kraus. So this race is quickly becoming who is not going to bowl each other out of the way as these two teammates are getting good for the championship and for the second place on the podium. Hagenstein trying to check out. We've said so many times before he has never won a race in Nassau Rallycross. Five laps to go in Riverside. Erdman slideways. So is Mertz, as Mertz is trying really hard to get that gap back from his teammate. As over the radio, not happy with Cody, is Mertz in the 81. Living good in fourth. A rough season for the four-time champion. Like I said, we are going to Las Vegas next week. That was his last victory, 2015A. He has not tasted the top step of the podium in two years. As Hagenstein leads us, Erdman, to the inside of his teammate, but he can't make anything happen yet. He's getting very close to the Dutchman. To the inside, he goes on the teammates. Contact between them off the jump. This is getting really sketchy between these teammates. You know that they, they are teammates, but when you take the MRT fire suits off them, they really don't like each other, but they do act cordial with each other on the Rallycross team. So no love lost between these guys. And Erdman will go to the inside on Hagenstein, but it does not work as Mertz in third once again. We're going to begin lap number three here in Riverside, California. It's basically the same cars as Aspen. Just swap living good for wets from that race. As, as we go to the back of the field here, this is the battle for fifth spot. It's Wetz, Denise, and Kraus here on lap number three. Back to the sharp end. Hagenstein getting pressured from Erdman in the 82. Mertz is there as well. As let's go on board Living Good in car number 51 here. And watch this battle unfold. Riverside, California. Three to go for Tristan Hagenstein. His teammate is hounding the back bumper of that silver Red Bull Subaru. Off the road they both go. Hagenstein squirrely re-entering the track there and Erdman is getting ever so close. Interestingly, Hagenstein is not the fastest man on the track. He has a 121-248. He's fourth quickest. Erdman behind him. So is Mertz. Playing defensive is the Dutchman. 
trying to get his first victory. Erdman second. Will he try the same move that he did on Mertz earlier? Mertz is trying the same move that Erdman did on him. It did not work. As the teammates, class of the field, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, winning every race except for Munich, Germany, and it was because Erdman lost by half a car length. These guys are on their game in 2016A. As all of the championships, except for the drivers, could be locked up today with this season. We're looking at two to go, but manufacturers, constructors, nations, tires, everything MRT related, and it looks like everything will be locked up, except for the drivers' championship going into Las Vegas next week. Two to go for Tristan Hagenstein, one of the longtime veterans of the NASA Rallycross Challenge, and he's got three drivers with 20 wins, 15 wins, and 13 wins behind him. So 46 race wins, if I did my math correctly, are behind him, and eight championships with two laps to go. The pressure is immense for the Dutchman. But can he hold on or will he crack? Erdman trying to take the fight to his teammate. Hagenstein is all over the track to be defensive. Erdman gets the bite off of turn six there. And it doesn't look like he can take the fight yet. Hagenstein leading the race. Mertz is in third, living good fourth. We're gonna take a quick look at the back of the field because I don't think anything has changed, but it looks like Kraus has had an incident in his Ford. He is in seventh, Denise is sixth, Wetz is fifth, fourth is living good, and the running order up front has not changed. We'll have to take a look and see what happened to Kraus after the race. Erdman getting close, bump drafting his teammate. To the inside he goes into the final corner. We're gonna have one lap to decide this race here in Riverside, California. And the teammates always produce a great race. Way high off the corner is Hagenstein. The Dutchman will have one lap to go. And can he hold off this immense pressure from his championship leading teammate and his champion teammate in third? Mertz is in third, trying to catch his teammates but it looks like he clips the curve and around they both go. So take the champions out of the equation. Living good is over in the 51. Mertz is going again. It looks like Wetz is coming up the hill and slams into his teammate. And that takes the Revolution boys out of the equation. This is still an MRT podium sweep currently with Mertz's issues. Lots of damage on that purple Subaru, but he is in third. That is something that has never happened either is an MRT podium sweep. They got close last week, in, or two weeks ago, sorry, in Aspen. But those issues, obviously, um, with these two, prevented that. Will this happen to them in Riverside? Erdman's going to have one last chance, and it's into turn nine, as Tristan Hagenstein is one corner away from his first victory in NASA Rallycross. Erdman's gonna dive to the inside, I think, but I don't think it's gonna happen. And after 71 entries, 52 finals, and 13 podiums, the Dutchman will come off the final corner and be victorious as Tristan Hagenstein wins in Riverside ahead of his teammate, Cody Erdman. The podium sweep will happen as well with Mertz. MRT one, two, and three today in Riverside, California. Fourth place will be Wetz in the Revolution Mitsubishi. Fifth place will be Denise, as it looks like he's struggling as well. Sixth place will be Kraus. And seventh place is Dylan Livengood. You might see Livengood hop on track here. He is jumping into the spare car to congratulate this man, Tristan Hagenstein on his first NASA Rallycross victory. Five years in the making, so many issues that prevented him from standing atop the podium, and this champagne is gonna be the tastiest champagne that he has ever had. His championship leader teammate will extend the point lead to nine over Mertz in the driver's championship. Actually 10, excuse me there, 10 points with the second place, but he did lose a point as Mertz won the quarterfinal. And this is a moment to remember. As the most dominating squad in the NASA Rallycross Challenge, 
one, two, and three. And it's never happened before. One, two finishes were unheard of. This is unheard of. It has never happened ever for any team until today. With this victory, the manufacturers, constructors, tires, nations, all those championships have been claimed by MRT Subaru Bridgestone in Germany as unassailable leads going into the final race here will clinch those championships for them. The Drivers Championship heading into Las Vegas 265 over Mertz's 255 for Erdman, Wetz 245, Hagenstein 229, Living Good 188, um, Kraus 157, Dylan Smith 132, Denise 128, Jonathan Taylor 117, and Victor Valley has 116. That's the top 10 in points. As the MRT boys are going to burn this place down for this man's first victory. What a race here in Riverside, California. You can tell Mertz says, I'm just going to get new cars after this race. It really doesn't matter to me as he flipped Erdman over here. As Mertz hired Hagenstein on a whim in 2014A. Hagenstein said, I'm tired of being the number one privateer. I want to be on a factory team. And he finally got that opportunity. And after five years, Hagenstein is victorious. We have one week to decide a champion between the other two MRT boys. It's going to be Erdman v. Mertz in Las Vegas in one week's time. Congratulations to Tristan Hagenstein on a historic first victory in NASA Rallycross. We will see you next week in Las Vegas. But until then, so long, everyone.